What you need to understand is that when the fallen angels mingled with humans during the time of Enoch, the resulted effect was the creation of multifaceted beings on the earth. The most popular among the new beings created were the Nephilim. They were the direct cross-breed between the fallen angels and the human women. However, there were also the Aleuids, who were the children of the Nephilim that married some human women. The cross-breed did not stop there at all. In addition, the ancient humans started noticing different race of beings developing at the time of Enoch on the earth. In fact, some of the humans' newborn children were beginning to develop some genetic variations that could not be explained at that time. However, the most significant and noticeable change in genetic variation was that of the great, great-grandchild of Enoch, Noah, himself. Now, according to Genesis 5 verse 29, Noah is the ninth person in Adam's line of ancestry and the son of Lamech. He is portrayed as the patriarch in the deluge story, Genesis 6 verse 11 and chapter 9 verse 19 who was selected by God to continue the human race after his immoral peers died in the flood, due to his pure piety. In the tumultuous realm of debates against the story of Noah from different scholars, concerning different texts other than the Bible, the narrative surrounding Noah undergoes a metamorphosis, a transformation that reassigns his conventional roles to new protagonists. As the chronicles unfold, it becomes evident that the essence of Noah's story is interwoven with the threads of alternative characters. Amidst this enigmatic layout, the Book of Two Enoch plays a pivotal role, orchestrating a transference of the minutiae of Noah's birth onto the canvas of a nascent hero, the imminent post olivian priest, Melchizedek. The genesis of Noah, a linchpin within the traditions in the time of Enoch, assumes a paramount significance. Delving into the pages of 1 Enoch 106 to 107 and that of the Genesis Apocryphon 2 to 5, Noah emerges as a prodigious child, a marvel in the design of existence. Within the description of 1 Enoch, he is painted with a countenance resplendent, possessing eyes that mirror the very radiance of the sun itself. His entry into the world defies the conventional norms, a fully formed being, and as the midwife relinquishes her grasp, he, with an otherworldly eloquence, engages in discourse with the divinity. Such extraordinary attributes bestowed upon the wonder child cast a profound shadow of suspicion upon his earthly origins, prompting his father, Lamech, to entertain the notion that Noah's birth transcended the realm of mere mortals, hinting at an ethereal, angelic inception possibility. In the antinoachic discussions of two Enoch, Noah's story takes on a new role. Once more, the Noah's chic narrative is reimagined with a twist as the unique details of Noah's story are moved to another character, specifically, Melchizedek. Scholars have observed that Melchizedek's birth in Savonic Enoch bears some similarities to Noah's birth in 1 Enoch and the Genesis Apocryphon. The Melchizedek storyline unfolds in the final chapters of 2 Enoch and is linked to the family of Nir. Sothenim, Nir's wife miraculously gives birth in her old age and precisely on the day of her death. The conception is notable, occurring while she is barren and without having slept with her husband. The narrative unfolds with the revelation that Nir, the priest, had abstained from conjugal relations with Sothenim, since the Lord had designated him for a special purpose before the people. Consequently, Sothenim concealed herself throughout the duration of her pregnancy. On the fateful day of delivery, Nir, recollecting his wife, summoned her to the temple. Upon her arrival, he discovered her pregnant state. Overwhelmed with shame, Nir contemplated casting her away, but before any action could be taken, Sothenim succumbed at his feet. From the lifeless form of Sothenim, Melchizedek was born into the world. When Nir and Noah were planning to enter Sothenim silently, they discovered the child sitting beside her, clothed, a strange disquiet seized them. The child, fully formed, communicated with articulate lips, bestowing blessings upon the Lord. Notably, the extraordinary infant bore the unmistakable mark of priesthood, a divine insignia adorning his chest, resplendent in its glory. Nir and Noah, acknowledging the sacred nature of the child, adorned him in the vestments of priesthood and nourished him with the consecrated bread. Fearing the wrath of the people, 
they opted to conceal Melchizedek, recognizing the perilous consequences if his existence were known. In the culminating act, the Lord issued a divine command to his archangel, Gabriel. The celestial directive was clear, take the child, Melchizedek, and transport him to the sacred precincts of the paradise Eden. Herein lay the celestial design for Melchizedek to ascend to the esteemed position of high priest in the post-flood era. The concluding passages of this concise narrative paint a celestial tableau, the ascent of Melchizedek, born on the wings of Gabriel, to the paradisiacal realm of Eden. It is in this ethereal landscape that the destiny of Melchizedek as the future high priest unfolds, guided by the divine orchestration of the Lord's command and the celestial wings of Gabriel. The parallels between Noah's birth and the Melchizedek narrative are striking, converging at several significant points. Familial connection. Both Noah and Melchizedek are integral members of Enoch's family circle, intertwining their destinies within this sacred lineage. Survivors of the Flood. Both characters bear witness as survivors of the cataclysmic flood, emerging from the waters to shape the post dilivian era. Noah and Melchizedek share a common destiny, each entrusted with a crucial mission in the post dilivian world, marking them as pivotal figures in the unfolding narrative of humanity. Both Noah and Melchizedek are depicted as awe-inspiring wonder children, radiating a splendor that transcends the ordinary. In the immediacy of their births, both Noah and Melchizedek engage in direct communion with the divine. Noah, as per 1 Enoch 106 verse 3, opened his mouth and spoke to the Lord with righteousness. Melchizedek, as per 2 Enoch 71 verse 19, spoke with his lips, and he blessed the Lord. Both characters are shrouded in suspicion regarding their lineage, with whispers of a divine or angelic origin swirling around them, adding an extra layer of mystique to their remarkable births. In this intricate design of parallelism, the narratives of Noah and Melchizedek converge, weaving a shared thread of extraordinary births, divine communication, and a destiny intertwined with the shaping of a new epoch. Some scholars posit a compelling comparison between Lamech's proclamation at the Genesis Apocryphon's outset and Noah's words in 2 Enoch during the scrutiny of Melchizedek. Lamech's introspective declaration, Behold, then I thought in my heart that the conception was the work of the Watchers and the pregnancy of the Holy Ones, finds an intriguing echo in Noah's assertion regarding Melchizedek. This is of the Lord, my brother. This thematic parallel underscores a notable convergence in the suspicion harbored by the fathers, Lamech and Noah, regarding the conception of their sons and the fidelity of their wives. Both patriarchs grapple with a profound skepticism, entertaining notions that transcend the ordinary, pointing towards celestial intervention or divine orchestration in the miraculous births of Noah and Melchizedek. The common thread of doubt woven into the narratives of these fathers adds an extra layer of complexity to the intricate design of their respective family sagas. In the Genesis Apocryphon, the specter of concern looms over Lamech as he grapples with profound worry and fear surrounding the impending birth of his son, Noah. His unease is deeply rooted in suspicions about the fidelity of his wife, Bathanash. Lamech entertains unsettling thoughts that reach beyond the realm of ordinary human conception. He harbors a belief that the conception was the work of the Watchers and the pregnancy of the Holy Ones, and it belonged to the Nephilim. This theme of suspicion within familial relationships mirrors a similar motif in the narrative of Nir, as found in the text. Nir, too, confronts a distressing situation wherein he perceives the potential unfaithfulness of his wife, Sothenim. The text recounts Nir's emotional turmoil, describing how he saw her and felt a profound sense of shame. His words to her convey a mixture of astonishment and disappointment. What is this that you have done, O wife? And why have you disgraced me in the front of the face of all people? And now, depart from me, go where you conceive the disgrace of your womb. The resonance between Lamech's apprehension in the Genesis Apocryphon and Nair's emotional tumult in this account further underscores the recurring theme of paternal suspicion and marital unease, weaving a common thread of familial drama and human emotion through these ancient narratives. The circumstances surrounding the conception are not explained in 2 Enoch's Sothenim. To Nir, she responds, O oh my lord, 
As I approach old age, I realize that I no longer possess the youthful ardor and I'm not sure how my womb's immorality came to be. Eventually, the unique revelation of their kids' significant future roles in the post olivian era consoled their dad. It is interesting to note that the revelation of the destruction of the earth by the flood is the framework in which this information is provided in both instances. 1 Enoch 106 verse 16 to 18 reads, And this son who has been born unto you shall be left upon the earth, and his three sons shall be saved when they who are upon the earth are dead. 2 Enoch 71 to 29 dash 30 reads, And this child will not perish along with those who are perishing in this generation, as I have revealed it, so that Melchizedek will be the head of the priests of the future. There are many fascinating parallels between the births of Melchizedek in 2 Enoch and Noah in the Pseudepigrapha that are impossible to miss. It is easy to see that the author of 2 Enoch wishes to downplay Noah's extraordinary nature and attribute these attributes to Melchizedek. Thank you for your support.